Greetings, comrades! Today we continue to talk about gun culture in Russia and move on to the present day. From the previous video we learned that the USSR people were accustomed to guns from childhood. All schools and parks had their own shooting ranges, and they were taught to disassemble and assemble rifles at school. Nevertheless, only hunters, professional sports shooters, military personnel or very high-ranking people could own firearms. In 1991 this whole system collapsed, and the long-awaited freedom came to Russia with Boris Yeltsin. And we know that freedom equals guns. So let's find out how things are in modern Russia with firearms training, what are the conditions under which Russian citizens can own a gun and, most importantly, are there more personally owned guns in the country compared to the USSR? Well, one thing is certain. Right after the collapse of the Soviet Union in the 90s, ordinary citizens had much, much more guns than before. Just walking down the street. This guy has a gun, and that guy has a gun, and this one has a gun. Oh, wait, he just walked into some kind of showdown between local gangs. Yes, weapons became much more accessible in the 90s, but it wasn't because of some new laws, it was about rampant crime. Naturally, today we will talk about it, but briefly. After all, the reasons were obvious. We will focus more on how the state tried to regulate the circulation of weapons in Russia and why, despite everything, today's laws on gun ownership in Russia are in some respects even stricter than they were in the Soviet Union. Let's talk first about the notorious gun culture and then about the peculiarities of gun ownership and storage. We'll compare it with the USSR, where the majority of guns were owned by hunters, but most people knew how to handle them from childhood. By the way, for a better understanding of this video, watch the previous one as well. So what has changed since 1991? First, the attitude of people towards the potential free sale of firearms… it has not changed. The majority of Russians do not support the free sale of weapons, believing that the sale of firearms should be strictly controlled. Look, the phrase gun culture can have two definitions. In the first one, a gun is seen as a tool for the defense of oneself, loved ones, property and dignity. A gun is simply an object, a dangerous one, which is needed for certain purposes – hunting, self-defense, sport. The second definition of gun culture is something near religious, more like a gun cult, where guns are a symbol of masculinity, power the status of the head of the family and an indicator that its owner is a protector. As you can guess, the second type of culture is quite widespread in the United States. But in Russia, the first type of attitude towards guns is much more common. Russian gun culture is unique in that it is largely devoted to military use in defense of the homeland rather than civilian ownership. To be honest, there has never been a particularly strong demand for widespread civilian gun ownership. So the question of allowing free circulation of weapons or completely banning them has never been high on the Russian agenda. But the question of whether to train children in this field was much more controversial. In the USSR, weapons handling was taught at school. In the 90s, the subject of primary military training was cancelled, and instead of it a class of auberge was introduced. Gas masks and medical tourniquets were transferred to this course, but shooting and assembling and disassembling AK-47s were not. Shooting ranges at school were closed. Specialized shooting ranges with air rifles and parks are still there, but far fewer than before. Zarnitsa games in children's camps have also become much less militarized, if not disappeared entirely. In general, children in modern Russia are taught much less about handling weapons, although this may change. In November of 2022, the head of the Ministry of Education of the Russian Federation, Sergei Kravtsov, told journalists that in the next academic year, in Russian schools, it is planned to introduce a mandatory course of the primary military training within the course of OBJ. The changes will be applied from September 1, 2024. We'll see how it's implemented this time around. So, the difference between modern Russia and the Soviet Union is at least that the age of acquaintance with weapons among Russians has increased dramatically. Now they won't give it to you at school, but what about adulthood? Has it become easier to buy a personal weapon? Moving forward to 1993. 
It was then that the Soviet gun law was amended for the first time in Russia. Let me remind you that under it only smoothbore hunting shotguns and air rifles could be purchased. The first amendments were introduced by the law on arms of May 20, 1993 and refer to the right of citizens to defend themselves with the use of special means of tear and irritant action, including gas weapons. In fact, this was a serious step, for until then citizens had no right to self-defense with weapons. At all. During the Soviet period of the state's history, self-defense was not considered to be one of the intended purposes of civilian weapons. The law on arms adopted in 1993 also introduced the concept of civilian firearms for the first time. This law was revised and replaced by the current federal law on weapons of December 13, 1996. According to this document, for self-defense, citizens can purchase smoothbore long-barreled weapons, as well as firearms of limited effect, pistols, revolvers, barrelless weapons with cartridges of traumatic gas and flashbang action. The same law set the minimum age for the purchase of any weapon at 18 years of age and clearly defined the need for and procedure of medical examination. At the same time, the law provided that the authorities of the constituent entities of the Federation could lower the minimum age for keeping and carrying, but not buying, smoothbore hunting weapons to 16 years of age. However, the law was far from perfect. Since 1996, it has been amended more than 30 times, and the latest changes came into effect only about a year ago. Therefore, of course, we will not review all these changes, we will deal with the most important ones. The law on weapons separates civilian, service, combat firearms and cold weapons. For Russian citizens who are not members of law enforcement agencies, only civilian and cold weapons are available. So, what are the basic conditions for owning a weapon in Russia? Analyzing the content of the Article 13 of the Federal Law on Weapons, we can distinguish three main groups of requirements and conditions imposed on citizens of Russia to grant them the right to purchase weapons. Two of the groups under consideration relate directly to the applicant, the third relates to the condition of storage of weapons. The first group defines the candidate's personal background. Necessary conditions here are reaching of age of majority, passing the primary training for the possession of weapons, and the absence of medical contraindications. The second group concerns the social status of the applicant for the purchase of weapons. This may include the presence of Russian citizenship and the absence of legal obstacles to such acquisition. Such obstacles are unexpunged conviction for a deliberate crime, deprivation of the right to purchase weapons on the basis of a court decision, serving a sentence for a crime committed, or repeat within one year commission of an administrative offense that infringes on public order or the established order of governance. Finally, the third group of requirements and conditions for legally owning a weapon are the requirements to the conditions of its storage. Such conditions include the presence of a permanent place of residence of the potential owner of the weapon, as well as his ability to ensure the proper safety of the acquired weapon at the specified place of residence. Anyone wishing to purchase a weapon must submit a certain package of documents to the licensing service, undergo training in the rules of safe handling of weapons, and then pass an examination on them. Yes, the right to distribute licenses for weapons was taken away from the Hunter's Society in 2010 and given to the Ministry of Internal Affairs. And then, six years later, they gave it to the Rosguardia when it was created. And to be even more precise, stricter control over the circulation of weapons was one of the main tasks assigned to the new department. After issuing a license to buy a gun, the license is valid for six months, during which you need to buy a gun. Regardless of whether you buy it from an official seller or just from some guy, the purchase will need to be formalized in the store. They take your license and give you a duplicate, the weapon and passport for it. The purchased weapon must be brought to the territorial department of the Resguardia, where it will be inspected and registered. After that, it will be possible to obtain a permit for storage and carrying of weapons, if it's required. From the age of 18, you can purchase only smoothbore weapons. Then you need to gain 5 years of smoothbore experience, after which you will be able to purchase a rifled weapon. The owner must report the loss of theft of a weapon subject to registration to the Rosguardia within 24 hours. In addition, the Rosguardia has the right to inspect a citizen's weapon at any time. For example, to check whether the owner has made any illegal modifications to the weapon.
What weapons can be legally bought and carried in Russia? Russia does not provide for the legal possession of short-barreled combat weapons, pistols and revolvers, as well as any weapons with an automatic mode of fire by citizens. Such weapons are an exclusive right of the state law enforcement agencies. Subject to obtaining a special license, citizens can legally purchase hunting weapons, self-defense weapons, sporting weapons, signal weapons and some cold weapons. Unlike in the USSR, hunting weapons can be purchased both smooth bore and rifled. Smooth bore weapons include classic double-barreled and single-barreled shotguns, semi-automatic shotguns, pump-action shotguns and other mainly reloadable multiple-shot shotguns. Rifled weapons include rifles and carbines. Among the hunting rifled weapons, there are a lot of weapons converted from army models and sometimes different little from the prototypes. A Russian hunter can easily own a carbine based on a Kalashnikov assault rifle or some foreign assault rifle. The main requirement is the absence of automatic fire capability and a magazine capacity of no more than 10 rounds. In addition, for hunting weapons, there are restrictions on the size, minimum length and types of ammunition used. Army ammunition is prohibited. Self-defense weapons. Non-lethal pistols and revolvers with rubber bullets, gas pistols, pistols with light and noise cartridges and some tasers. Sporting weapons, smoothbore rifles for bench rest and practical shooting and sporting rifles for biathlon, for example. There are also some interesting aspects here. For example, you can legally buy a rifle pistol, but you won't have the right to carry it. A short barrel belonging to you must be kept exclusively in a shooting club or at a shooting range. Or cold weapons. For example, you can carry weapons that have cultural value only with historical costumes and during events that are organized by the authorities with the permission of the Ministry of Culture. That is, for example, a Cossack saber, shashka only with a Cossack costume. In addition, some weapons can be bought without a license. Low caliber and weak air guns, old antique collectible weapons, copies and replicas of weapons, decommissioned deactivated weapons, some stun guns, utility knives, as well as fencing rapiers and other sports equipment. According to Rasgvardia, in 2020, this is the most recent information, there were almost 6.5 million guns legally possessed by 3.7 million people. There are, of course, illegal guns in the country. The Geneva Institute for International and Development Studies estimates that Russians have illegally bought and kept up to 11 million guns. Whether these figures can be trusted is debatable, but the fact that there are enough illegal guns in the country is obvious. For comparison, in the United States, according to various estimates, there are between 150 million and 450 million guns on hand. Once again, this is a reflection of the development of gun culture in Russia. A fairly small percentage of the population is interested in owning a gun. 2.5% of the population owns them. Let's say even another 7.5% would like to own a gun, but they don't or own it illegally. The other 90% of people don't really care about guns. Again, compare this with the US, where 30% of the adult population own a gun and another 36% do not rule out owning one in the future. By the way, Russia is firmly in first place in the world in terms of the number of firearms owned by law enforcement agencies. Both China and the United States are behind. The stats on types of weapons are also interesting. In 2019, Russians had on hand, legally, 4.4 million units of smoothbore weapons, 970,000 rifled, 925,000 traumatic, non-lethal, 310,000 gas pistols and revolvers, and 5.5 thousand pneumatic weapons. It should be noted that the statistics include only relatively powerful pneumatic weapons, with a muzzle energy of more than 7.5 joules. Anything less powerful can be bought without a license, and there are many more such weapons owned. If we analyze specifically the sales for 2020, pneumatic weapons are more than 50% of total sales. Since 2014, the import of civilian weapons into Russia has been banned, so Western weapons have become much more expensive than domestic or Turkish ones and are sold only on the secondary market. The peculiarities of gun storage in Russia are also interesting. Weapons can only be stored at home in a special safe, with ammunition stored separately and locked with a separate lock. 
In any case, it must not be accessible to other people. For example, I have heard stories that the local policeman refused to sign a permit for weapons if the potential owner lived on the first floor and did not have bars installed on the windows to protect against the thieves. Some police officers require safes to be bolted to the floor or wall so that they cannot be stolen. However, such cases are more like local excesses of the authorities. The owner is also obliged to transport the weapon only when it's unloaded and it must be in a pouch, holster or case. The cartridges must be kept separately. No more than five weapons may be transported at a time. All in all, this all sounds pretty normal. But lately the laws have gotten stricter. On June 28, 2021, the president signed the law number 231 on amendments to the federal law on weapons and certain legislative acts of the Russian Federation. And these rules seriously complicated the life of gun enthusiasts. As always, there were reasons for this. This time it was the mass murders at the college in Kerch in 2018 and at the school in Kazan in 2021. In both cases, the attackers bought the weapons of crime, both times Turkish, completely legally. Immediately after the second case, it was decided to tighten gun laws in the country. So what changed? First, there is a clear division between smoothbore and rifled weapons now. For example, previously a weapon with only part of the barrel being rifled was considered smoothbore from the point of view of the law, and also guns with a barrel of a special shape giving rotation to the bullet. Now this loophole has been removed. A barrel bore that allows the bullet to rotate and any rifling, regardless of its length, automatically puts the weapon in the category of rifled, which means that you can buy it only after 5 years of ownership of smoothbore. Also, guns are now considered a source of increased danger. This means that the owner of the gun is obliged to compensate for the damage caused by his gun, regardless of his own guilt. For example, if the owner left the gun unattended while hunting and another person damages some car with a shot from his gun, the owner of the gun will have to pay for it. The age limit for obtaining a license has also been raised. Previously, it was possible to buy a hunting weapon from the age of 18. Now it is only from the age of 21. In addition, if a person receives a license for the first time, now he can buy only smoothbore with a maximum of two barrels, without a magazine or cylinder. Only classic brake barrel shotguns. Nevertheless, some categories of citizens can still buy weapons from the age of 18. For example, those who have completed compulsory military service, those serving or studying in state paramilitary organizations, representatives of indigenous peoples of the north, professional hunters, CIT guards and employees of private security services. All other citizens from the age of 18 can purchase only gas, sporting, signaling and hunting smoothbore weapons, but the latter only for sports, not for hunting. In addition, it has become much more difficult to obtain a weapon for people with a criminal record. Now, even those who have been involved in administrative offenses during the last year, for example, drunk driving or drug use, can be denied a license. Also, since recently, the maximum number of weapons that can be owned has been limited. 2 to 5, depending on the type. I don't know if this will help in curbing crime, especially since, according to many estimates, the black market for weapons in Russia is thriving. It is easy to buy weapons without a license, medical certificates, registration and other formalities on the darknet, for example. Many illegal weapons have flowed into Russia from Donbass since 2014. In addition, the main sources of replenishment of the black market include the manufacture of combat weapons on the basis of decommissioned weapons, modification of civilian weapons into combat analogs, and smuggling from abroad. Some weapons enter the shadow market from criminal structures or from regions where active combat operations were conducted during the Second World War. It is very difficult to estimate the actual size of the black market today, so I won't pretend that I know this for sure. The issue of the ability to use weapons for self-defense is also pretty complicated. For example, any long-barreled weapon cannot be carried for self-defense, period. It can only be transported or carried, for example, to a hunting ground or shooting range. If you are attacked at home, you are welcome. Just go find the keys to the safe first, open the safe, get the gun, 
M load. Well, you get the idea. So only gas and non-lethal pistols are technically allowed to be carried on person for self-defense. At the same time, the law allows you to defend yourself with anything you want. A gun, hunting knife, shotgun, brick or grenade. As long as you legally possess the grenade. You can defend yourself in any way that is not against the law. If you are subjected to violence that is dangerous to your life and health, you can harm or kill your attacker in any way you want. You will not be prosecuted. But if someone is injured or killed as a result of your self-defense, the defender will have to prove that the actions of the attacker actually posed a real threat to his life or health. If you fail to prove it, you may be held criminally liable, and you will be very lucky if it is the article exceeding the limits of necessary self-defense and not murder. If it comes to shooting, the law says you must first warn them that you have a gun and that you will shoot. Otherwise, again, you are exceeding the limits. Women, persons with obvious signs of disability, minors when their age is obvious or known, cannot be fired at. It is forbidden to take the weapon out of the holster or from the case if there are no grounds for its use. And there are only two grounds in the law – threat to life or health. Even if you are asked by a police officer to demonstrate your weapon, by law you cannot take it out of its holster in the city. Therefore, you should be extremely careful in self-defense. Unfortunately, in Russia the principle of the one who is hurt the most is the victim the one who first filed the report is not to blame. The criminal who attacked you with a knife can easily claim that he was just walking and you just randomly shot him in the knee for no reason. Or that he was strolling with an axe from the store to his yard to chop wood. Go and try to prove that he almost took your head off with that axe. You won't. In short, don't even think about defending yourself with firearms in Russia unless it's a matter of life and death. You will go to jail 99% of the time. And also you will pay disability pension to the wounded for the rest of your life. Although in Russia there is a good saying, it is better to be judged by three than carried by four. Thanks for watching. And as always, a huge shout out to my biggest Patreon supporters. Yelizeta Zaharova, Kirill Klimuk, Zimon Berze, Jimmy Elbin, Eli, Petr Ilich and Bruce Etunik. See you guys next time.